This is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, or more precisely, the box it comes in. Today we're going to do a quick unboxing video, I'll show you what's in the box, we'll also do a quick walk through the menus, and finally I'll show you some footage that I recently shot with my camera. Okay, so let's open the box up. The first thing you see is this uh, really neat welcome pack. For any of you guys that have ever uh, had Blackmagic cameras, uh, their packaging is really well made. Uh, you get a little SD card with a manual, you also get uh, a really nice uh, a kind of a message, a thank you message from Graham Petty, the CEO of the company. Uh, overall, again, this is this is really standard stuff. You do get your battery, which is a Canon LPE6 type battery. This is uh, uh, actually a Blackmagic made battery, I guess, or at least it's branded this way. Um, it's a 2000 uh, milliamp hours uh, battery, 7.4 volts. So this kind of battery usually should give you about, they say about an hour, but in my experience, you get about half an hour to 40 minutes, depending on how you shoot and what you shoot with it. Okay, so moving on to the big feature here of this box, uh, apart from the camera, of course, is the Venture Resolve 15 Studio. Now, uh, this is the paid version of Resolve. If you guys remember the original Pocket Camera, uh, which was released a few years back, uh, it, it didn't come with the paid version of Resolve. Now, this one does, just like the Ursa Mini Pro, the Ursa Mini, and the other bigger uh, cameras that, and more expensive cameras that Blackmagic sells. The Pocket Cinema Camera 4K comes with the paid version of Resolve, which is absolutely awesome. This saves you 300 pounds slash dollars uh, to buy, which is, which is really nice. So next we get the AC adapter slash charger. This is a two pin limo looking style connector, which goes on the side of the camera. In my opinion, is a huge improvement compared to the original pocket camera, which if you guys remember had just a very tiny, uh, it wasn't even locking kind of connector, which you could take out inadvertently uh, and prevent your camera from either charging the battery inside or actually getting power from the wall. So with this uh, AC adapter, obviously you get power from the wall if you want to run the camera via mains if you're in a studio. So these are the four adapters which are included in the box, depending on where you live in the world. Select the appropriate one for you and slot it into the groove and it kind of clicks. Uh, it's really easy and neat. And there's a little button here on the middle. I just want to make sure you guys can see it. You press it with your thumb and it just pops up. So if you're traveling to you know, Europe or Asia or any other part of the world, these four adapters uh, should be good for, uh, for most places. Okay, so where's the camera? Well, there it is. It's on the bottom here. It's uh, on the, actually at the lower shelf. And the first thing you would notice is this finish. It's really nice to hold. Uh, this is a, um, I guess, a polycarbonate material. Uh, they made this, uh, they chose this material because they wanted to make the camera very light. And indeed, this is a, quite a, for its size, this is much lighter than, than expected. Uh, my 5D Mark IV is, I wouldn't say probably the same size, it's definitely not as long, but it is much heavier um, than this camera. And this is really nice. I, I really like this, uh, this shape. The grip is comfortable. As you can see the back here, uh, you get this giant, uh, very much like a smartphone monitor and it's touch screen. This display is absolutely beautiful. It's full HD. Uh, really responsive to, um, to kind of the touch and I'll power the camera in a second and show you guys. You get your multifunction buttons. Uh, there's three of them here. Uh, one, two, three. You can program different camera features to that. You get a 3.5 jack in uh, audio jack. That's for uh, your uh, road. If you want to use something like a Rode Video Mic Pro and you also get headphones uh, output. Uh, to monitor audio and you get a full size HDMI output. For any of you coming from a GH5, GH5S style camera, this is brilliant and you know how, how good this is and how useful this is. So on the bottom you get your uh, locking uh, connector. This is the uh, two pin uh, 12 volt input. This is to uh, charge the camera uh, or uh, plug it uh, into the mains uh, to power it. You get a mini XLR input and this is for audio and the USB type C input which is very important because this one allows you to record um, on a uh, external SSD, which is absolutely brilliant. And on this side, the right side of the camera, we get the media slots, uh, very much like a DSLR camera, although I kind of find, maybe because this camera is only a week old, this is my, my personal camera, and I've only used it a few times. Uh, it's a bit difficult to open. I'm not sure the grip here is not very good, so you have to really kind of force it, but obviously try not to break it. And it took me a while to get used to it. But anyway, here are the two slots. You get CFast 2.0 and an SD uh, XC UHS-2 uh, slot for SD cards, which is, which is very nice and very neat. So uh, you do need to have really fast cards though. That's the one thing, uh, but we'll do a separate video for uh, which cards are compatible, which cards I've tested uh, and all that jazz. Now CFast 2.0, I've only used SanDisk uh, Extreme. 
uh, Extreme Pro, uh, I guess that's what the model is, uh, Series D and B, which are for the C300 Mark II, which I already have. And uh, I was able to use those CFast cards into this camera. They work absolutely flawlessly. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the menu. So the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. The menu button is here, it's on the side. It's above the playback button. It's got three little lines on it. So by pressing it, we're greeted with the first uh, kind of default um, uh, section of the menu, uh, it's the record, um, I guess, uh, sub-menu. And in here you get a chance to choose your uh, uh, recording format, whether you'll be recording in ProRes or RAW. So in RAW you have three options, a lossless, 3 to 1 and 4 to 1, which are the different compressions. And you also get a choice of resolution, uh, three resolutions. Uh, the, uh, the top one, uh, 4K DCI, which uses the full sensor, full micro four thirds sensor, and records in uh, 4096 by 2160, which is the uh, DCI spec for uh, 4K or cinema 4K. You also get uh, Ultra HD, which is 3840 by 2160. Same vertical as uh, DCI, but uh, slightly shorter on the sides. Uh, one thing to mention is uh, this is a, there is a slight sensor crop uh, on here, uh, obviously because it cuts the side portions uh, compared to 4K DCI, which uses the full uh, the chip. However, the biggest uh, drop um, in terms of a crop, uh, actually, I should say, comes in uh, full HD, which is here. And this is because uh, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K doesn't downscale from 4K to full HD when you're recording RAW. It actually uses a, the center portion of the sensor which gives you roughly two times crop, maybe it's even a little bit larger. I have not tested it yet, but it is significant, uh, meaning that if you use, let's say, an um, 18 millimeter lens uh, on the, on, uh, in 4K DCI, which uses the full sensor, if you flip to HD, you'll automatically get a crop. Uh, it will be something like a 36 or even a 38 mil. So uh, the wide end is going to be pretty difficult if you do RAW in uh, full HD. So it's recommended to do it in 4K and then in post deliver your RAW. Uh, ProRes comes in uh, ProRes HQ, 422, LT and Proxy, Proxy being the smallest file, HQ being the largest. Uh, all are the 10-bit options, 10-bit 422. Uh, you don't get any 444 or XQ uh, options in here, however, 10-bit 422 ProRes HQ and 422 especially uh, should be pretty good. I mean, it should be uh, sufficient for most workflows, so regardless whether they're 4K or Full HD. Uh, later in the video, I'll show you some uh, actually ProRes LT footage that I shot in 4K and then downsampled to HD for this video. So you can uh, kind of gauge the quality, albeit with uh, the YouTube compression. Uh, you get four options, the same options for resolution, 4K DCI, Ultra HD or ProRes. Um, again, if you look on the bottom here, there's three dots, which means that there's more uh, options, more sub-menus in this uh, menu here. Uh, on the top here, you can choose the dynamic range. You can shoot in film, which is the flat uh, gamma profile that Blackmagic um, has developed. It's their own kind of uh, log, which they call BMD, uh, BMD film. Uh, when you're in RAW, you are automatically recording in that. You can't select any of the other two options, but if you do record in ProRes in camera, you can choose whether you want to kind of bake in a Rec. 709 look, which is the video, or extended video, which gives you a little bit um, softer highlight roll-off, and it's not as uh, aggressive as, as video. So if you want to deliver the files to a producer straight out of the camera, and they don't want to do any post work whatsoever, choose extended video, that's going to bake in that look. Uh, on the bottom here, you get obviously the option, uh, options of your project frame rate, so that's very important. Um, you can choose uh, 24, 25p, you can do 29, 20, uh, 29.97 if you're in the States and or NTSC uh, country. You can do 30 frames per second and you can do 50 or 60. So it's, it's very important to know that this is actually the project frame rate. This is not your slow-mo, your slow-mo is here on the side. Uh, usually you'll be doing either 24 2398 if you're in the States, you'll be doing true 24 or, or 25B. Uh, here, uh, the second option uh, is for off-speed recording, which is again your slow motion. So if we toggle that, you can automatically set uh, the camera to, to a slow motion option. So in my case, I've done it to 60. You can do it to 50 or even stranger frames like 46 or 48. I know some people uh, coming, especially from the red world, they, they like to do 48 frames per second. Um, if you want to do 60, for example, uh, that's fine. You can do that from here. And if we exit out of here for a second, just want to show you real quick. Here we have the FPS indicator shows 60 over 25, which means we're recording right now in 60 frames without uh, windowing the sensor 
but our project rate is, is 25p and you can toggle that from this button here. So by hitting the HFR button one time, you're automatically in just in 25p. Hit it one more time, you're in 60. And again, you can change those in here. Uh, using a window sensor mode gives you access to the highest frame rates, which is in full HD, uh, which goes 60 and beyond. So those are a maximum of 120 uh, frames per second. And you can set that from here. On the bottom, uh, you get the preferred uh, media for recording, either CFast, SD, or you can actually record to the fullest card. So whichever card has most data on it, you will record on it, which I believe is, in my opinion, is very useful. Another option here on the bottom is that uh, you can set it to, if, if the camera detects that it drops frames, for example, if you don't have uh, that fast of a card and you're trying to record raw, for example, if it detects a drop frame, it will automatically uh, stop recording so it's not to ruin your file. You can turn it off though. Um, I haven't really tried that, but it's pretty self-explanatory and I suggest you guys leave it on uh, just in case. And this way you will kind of see when you're dropping frames. Okay, so moving over to the second uh, portion of the menu, uh, which is the monitoring section. Here you get a choice uh, of settings for your LCD, your HDMI output, or uh, both at the same time. Going over the LCD, the touchscreen display here, it gives you an option to do a clean feed with uh, no uh, kind of information whatsoever. Uh, the, you can also display your 3D LUT that uh, you've selected, whether that's extended video or video, or a, a third party uh, 3D LUT that you've imported or your own. You also do get a choice of a zebra, you can do focus assist, uh, frame guides, grid, uh, safe areas and, and false color. Those can also be adjusted here from the uh, the function buttons, the three function buttons on the top and you can also control these from this uh, little icon here which is on the top right hand corner. And you can toggle between uh, zebras uh, on and off. You can do uh, focus assist, uh, frame guides. You can also do um, kind of your grids whether you want to do uh, thirds or cross chairs or center dot. And in here you can do safe area as well. And lastly but not least, you can do uh, false color. Uh, here I don't have a lens attached so it's showing all blue. Um, but that's because I wanted to make sure that you guys can actually see uh, these a little bit better because I'm here on a white background and it's gonna be a bit difficult to see otherwise. Okay, moving over um, to the audio side of things. Um, this is again very intuitive. Um, you have uh, to choose your source here, whether you're going to record in camera with using the camera um, microphones. Um, you have a choice obviously to not record audio at all, or if you want to do a, the 3.5 uh, mic on the side, left or right. And you can also choose whether you want to go through the XLRs. Uh, it's you, you, it's the same thing on both sides, uh, left or right. Here you can have uh, the kind of channel gain. You can adjust it uh, all the way to, from zero to to 100. Again, super intuitive, very easy to navigate, very responsive, very much like a like a smartphone. I mean, regardless whether you're using Android or or iOS, this is this is super touch sensitive. Okay, I'm moving over to the next one. The next window is kind of uh, your setup. This is where you would uh, set your kind of language, your date, whether you want to see your shutter speed displayed as an angle, uh, for example, like 180 degrees, or shutter speed like one over 50th. Uh, also the uh, kind of a flicker frame rate, depending on your country or, or, or your region. For example, I'm in the UK, so over here we're at 50 Hertz. If you're in the States, for example, you'll need to select 60 Hertz to kind of prevent flicker when you're uh, shooting inside with fluorescence or some LEDs on the streets or things like that. This is a very interesting screen, which I haven't really uh, kind of dug into, but uh, you can import like your own presets uh, for, let's say you're doing you're using the camera for music video and you kind of have your own specific settings um, in here. So you can have up to 12 that you can import and you can select and boom, everything is uh, uh, kind of like a custom menu of sorts. The last window here is your LUTs. Um, here you can choose to monitor film uh, into extended video or to a REC 2020 uh, kind of hybrid low gamma HLG or a PQ. Uh, you also have here at the end the normal uh, kind of a REC 709-ish which is the most aggressive one of them all. I would highly recommend you guys uh, check this first one out. It's, it's really nice. And again, this is uh, pretty much everything. I mean, this is very easy to use. I haven't really dug into uh, some of the menus uh, uh, that much in depth, but as you saw, 
this is a very easy camera to navigate. So with that said, let's take a look at some footage. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found the unboxing, the menu walkthrough and the footage useful, especially for those of you who are still waiting to receive their cameras. And of course, those of you uh, interested in pre-ordering the camera, I will include a link to the Visual Impact website down in the uh, description where you can uh, pre-order yours. And again, if you uh, want to uh, see some more videos that we'll be publishing uh, in the near future on this camera and uh, many other cameras, highly recommend you guys uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until the next video, you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you.